Um, now you can see in this I've actually gone through and used main boom angle um, and constrained a list. Just ignore that. That's just because when I went about it the first time I forgot to set my reference line as the work plane. Instead I've used the, um, the center front back reference plane as the work plane which means that it doesn't automatically change angles by itself so I then had to explicitly tell it how to do that which is why you see all these massive angles going out here um, I was obviously having a slow day and didn't think too uh, much about it and just decided to chuck extra angles in but um, yeah you don't need to do that so I've just rinsed and repeat for the various individual bits and you can see I just made it a 50 mil difference um, between each one, as they, oh, I think it's actually might be 20 mil less that they each indented, and each one I actually just set to go right from the beginning, and that's just because I didn't want it to um, have a situation where one went to zero and of course it couldn't make the family. Okay. Right, so that is essentially how I modelled the, uh, the main arm. This bit is a little bit more tricky. Again, I just made this a fixed point, so I've put a vertical reference plane in over here, and then I've added a reference line constrained at the end point to that intersection. And similarly, I put a reference line in here. and I put an, an another main boom angle off it. Again, I wouldn't have had to do that if I set this reference line as the work plane. I locked this dimension. Uh, I just picked a number at random, I think, from memory. Um, just on something that looked right. And then I've simply drawn this sweep which if we, if we jump into our 3D view, you can see I've just used a cylinder. So if we look at the sweep, I've used pick path um, and just pick the reference line as the, as the work plane, or as the path. And then the profile, I simply just sketched a circle and I haven't made it adjustable at all. Okay, and I, by using pick path, that means I didn't need to actually constrain the path. I could just use that reference line um, and make sure that the reference line was locked. So because it's locked to that reference line and to this intersection, or this uh, intersection of grids, um, it's essentially going to constrain that solid um, similarly that that is a fixed distance off the end point of the line at 6500 for those of you using the metric system um, and then finally I just added this extrusion basically with something to fin finish against and as you can see I've just put fixed dimensions here lock that in um, That one I just aligned to the face of the main boom. Um, and then I've just got a dimension going off that reference line to there because that's just parallel to that reference line. Okay, and like I say, any questions, just post it and I'll, I'll put some subsequent videos because I know some of you might have been expecting a little bit more of a step-by-step -step. but like I said I just don't have that time at the moment but moving on alright so we've got one more level of nesting I think in here and that's this bit here okay um, so if we go back down one more level and we choose our family Alright, so what I've done here is I've used the generic model face-based template 
and see that's just my extrusion that comes with the face base template okay so I've obviously put in a, a few reference planes if I can hover over it um, to con generally control control the uh, the width of the object and also the if we look at the left view the various um, centroid points for where these lines pivot um, so these I didn't need to do a lot they're just fixed extrusions because they're not really needing to be adjustable at all okay so if I just look at the various bits it's another just plain extrusion and I've just used reference planes in this direction to control how far they've extruded out in that direction so again nothing special about that one when we do come to something special I've made I've obviously locked this these two reference planes at fixed distances and again they're controlling that particular reference line which I've locked here and then I've added an angular dimension to that reference line off this reference plane and I've called it boom angle just to be consistent that's what I called it in the when the other nested family um, and I also added a parameter for, to control the length of that line okay now each of these sweeps that go on that are part of this um, this main hook section I've set if we have a look in here uh, why is it saying that that's interesting I set this reference line as the work plane first and then just used a sweep by sketch okay and again with my profile I just sketched the profile on there and because this was the work plane I didn't actually need to control the endpoints it'll just maintain um, the same distances off the endpoints based on how far I've actually offset it so again look at the, looking at this one just a simple circle profile and as you can see the work plane is the reference line and all I did was constrain or well, I didn't even need to constrain it I just set it as a fixed distance off the reference line Okay, so I'll cancel out of that, cancel out of that. Again, this bit was in another extrusion, and again, I set this plane of that reference line as the work plane, and then constrained it at a fixed distance off the endpoint of the line. And the hook, I didn't constrain at all. and like I said because this reference line is the actual work plane it's just maintaining its association with the endpoint there okay so that's essentially what I ended up modeling alright so I obviously saved each one of these out if you look in family types we have the cable drop um, instance parameter which was the dimension on that reference line length and the boom angle control all right so I then proceeded to load that into this family and because it's face based 
let's just delete this one. I'll show you how I went about putting it in. Um, I loaded it into this family. I simply went component nest crane hook. I call all my nested families nest. Um, hovered over this work plane. Just rotate it around. Okay. I didn't need to be too accurate. And because it's face based, I know that if I, say for instance, make this 4 meters, it's going to maintain its association with that face. Um, I then linked the cable drop to another cable drop parameter. So you can see that's going to jump out like that. And I linked that boom angle that I made in the other one using this associate family parameter and to main boom angle in this one. Okay, and it just so happens it knows that the main boom angle, because of the way I actually set that angle up, um, it's going to maintain itself perpendicular with the ground. So looking in here, we now have main boom angle, each of the extensions, and the cable drop. Alright, so that's that level.